quickly that all came crumbling down. Okay, so on the menu today, we're gonna make Julia Child's, it's a rolled up cake. That's what it is. That's what we're making. This is Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Okay, so I'm in this book today, the French Chef Cookbook from Julia Child, and my copy is an old copy. First published in 1961, mine is from 1968. So be careful, Jamie. You're handling something delicate. Okay, here we are. The French jelly roll. Orange almond cake with strawberry filling. Jelly roll cakes are quick to make and dramatic to serve, and you can fill and dress them in any manner that suits your fancy. From jelly, fresh fruit, to do, do, do. Honestly, my fancy is, <laughs> my fancy, Julia, is whatever you're suggesting. And that appears to be the orange almond cake with strawberry filling. So that's what we're gonna do. No questions asked. A couple years ago, I made the chocolate Swiss roll on this channel and uh, everything went well with that. It's like another rolled up cake with a filling inside. And yeah, it went surprisingly well, almost to the point where it's concerning. So yeah, I got high hopes today. High hopes. Anyway, I just thought you'd want to know that. Shall we get started? Three tablespoons of butter that I need to melt. It's just, it's just doing it now. It's probably done. And I need to let this cool to tepid. So just put it off to the side for a second. Uh, paint the inside of the cake pan with the melted butter. Okay, bring the melted butter back over here. <laughs> 17 by 11. That's perfect. Brush some melted butter into the inside of my pan. Parchment paper, just a bit bigger than what the pan is. Aya! And I just gotta butter the paper as well. Just gonna take a little flour and I gotta sprinkle it on the inside. And she says, roll it around. Knock out the excess flour. That pan is prepped. So I need three eggs. Bowl me, please. Perfect. Another one. Yep. Perfect. And I'm gonna separate my eggs, egg whites, egg yolks. Okay, can I have one more bowl, please? <laughs> okay, okay. Three egg yolks into my bigger bowl, two third cup of sugar. So whisk this together using a large wire whip. Biggest one I got. One orange, which I'm gonna grate in the rind of it first. By the time I go get that electrical hand mixer, plug it in, this will have been beaten to where I needed it to get to. So just keep doing what you're doing. Vigorously. <sighs> okay, thickened and pale yellow. One third cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. No, don't use that. Use the lemon thing. Just making it part of the routine now, right? Always be clean in my friends. He shoots. Scores. Cup on some wax paper and I'm just gonna sift three quarters of a cup of cake flour through my sieve and into my... Um... You don't wanna be caught not sifting the flour and then all of a sudden you have a sifting problem. So just follow through with the sifted flour. I need three quarters of a cup. In we go. Quarter teaspoon of almond extract. Three quarters of a cup pulverized almonds, which are from the uh, orange cake video. Manipulation. <gasps> oh, which I know is probably one of the videos where a lot of you uh, found me on the internet. Very thankful for that video, but also it was a nightmare. So it was good and bad. Beat this all together. Did I add the orange juice? Oh shit, did I add the orange juice? Beat in the orange juice, then the almonds and everything else. Oh. We're kind of going out of order, but now I add in the orange juice. Just be thankful that you didn't forget it, okay? It's time for an old friend. 
the Silver Fox. You have one minute to talk about Stiff Peaks yet again. I feel like I talk about them in every other episode. It's probably true. It's probably the most commonly said thing on the show, Stiff Peaks. Anyway, what I gotta do is make Stiff Peaks. In my very clean bowl, I'm gonna add in the egg whites to three eggs, whisk attachment. So we know the drill, it's moderate heat until we get to soft peaks. Then I'm gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and a pinch of salt. Then I'm gonna turn the heat up, which is actually the speed, not the heat, up too high. Sprinkle in a tablespoon of sugar until I reach stiff peaks. We got some stiff peaks. So I was watching Julia on her show make this and she mentioned that because this mix here is a bit runnier than most other cake batters, that I can just add all these egg yolks in at once, rather than just a little bit to start and mixing that together, then adding the rest. No, just go for it, man. Rapidly and delicately fold together using a rubber spatula. Yeah, there was no doubt, right? Scoop to the bottom, rotate the bowl too, don't forget that. Cut to the bottom, all the way over, rotate. Once it's almost all blended together, rapidly blend in the melted, tepid butter half a tablespoon at a time. That has all been mixed together. Time is really money here, so we gotta move on to the next part. Immediately pour this batter into my prepped cake pan. Every last drop. Spread it out into the pan. Out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang the pan briefly on the table to even the mixture. Briefly. Done. So into the oven. Only 10 minutes. Very brief bake time. It's gonna be even quicker than that because my oven is a little more modern than whatever she was using. So I can't overcook this thing or the cake will break when it's rolled up. It must be soft and spongy. Okay, I think that's done. That was around, it ended up being around nine and a half minutes. Cake is done when it barely starts to turn color. When the top is light and springy or spongy and there's some separation between the cake and the side of the pan and the paper here. I think we're good. Do not overcook or cake will break when rolled up. Well, I don't think I did. So, very specific here, but 1 16th of a layer of powdered sugar on the very top of this cake once it's been removed from the oven. So it's still hot. I'm not gonna get the measuring tape out for 1 16th of an inch, so I just gotta cover it uh, until I say so. Cover this with a sheet of wax paper. Rinse a towel in cold water and wring it out. Yeah, it's wringed out. And lay over the wax paper. One, two, three. Turn the tray upside down, completed, and let this cool for 20 minutes, just like this. Cool. Cool. Okay, so I was expecting a day of no drama today. I thought it was just gonna be smooth sailing right to the finish line. You know, I have experience making a rolled up cake. I've read over the recipe several times before I started. I watched the 30 minute episode of Julia making this on her show. I mise en place everything. You know, the cake is all done. It looked great. It's cooled off. The kitchen is now clean. Well, yeah, I was just reading the recipe over again. And this part of the book has really just, you know, listen to this. Once the cake is cooled and once it's been dislodged from the pan, it is now ready for filling, which should be done immediately. Immediately. The filling hasn't even been made yet. It is usually safest to fill and roll the cake promptly. Mm-hmm. Da, da 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 You can store it in the fridge, but it's gonna be a little risky because the risk is that the cake may dry out, lose its sponginess, and then be unrollable. I'm not gonna take this pan off the cake yet. I'm not even gonna expose it to the air in this kitchen right now. I'm just gonna act like everything's cool. I'm gonna make the filling as I was going to anyway. I'm just gonna make sure I do it right. And then we're gonna get back to this point and then I will remove the pan. We'll put this cake together. But everything's cool. Everything is cool. So I think if I just put this off the side, this is gonna be my cutting board stand in for now while we get this filling Done. Who's ready? I just sliced up a whole bunch of strawberries. What I need is a total of four cups worth. 10 ounces, 732 grams. This is the fun part. Half a cup of sugar. Hell yeah. This is that all about. I to let this hang out for 20 minutes. Mmm. Fas au fraise, chou chou chan. 
Farceau fraise, siou siou san. Yeah. We probably should talk about this filling, fresh strawberry filling with almonds and kumquats. Farceau fraise, siou siou san. Kumquats. <laughs> I, is a completely new to me fruit. I've heard of it and I've laughed at it, but I've never seen it. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it because neither am I. I went searching all over the city the other day for kumquats. Any store I could think of, you know, any place that was listed online that said they carry kumquats, I went there and I, I searched. Is there any kumquats around here? I asked everyone, you got kumquats? No, kumquats, sir? No, no one has them. Until one kind merchant just laid it to me straight. He said, go home and give up. You're not gonna find them right now. They're too popular. Restaurants are using them in their recipes. They're just, everyone is out right now, out of kumquats. Told me to go home and just, you know, go to the website that we all know and secretly love and buy them there. So that's what I did. I paid a premium for them and it's way more than I ever wanted of kumquats. But now I got my, uh, I got my kumquats. Kumquat is like an orange in reverse with sweet skin and tart pulp. So you don't have to peel the kumquat. You simply eat the entire fruit. Yeah, it's like reminiscent of an orange, but it almost at times feels like you're eating like the orange rind, if that makes any sense. But it's like really juicy on the inside. I'm liking the kumquat. That's what they look like on the inside. She says they need to be seeded. I am not seeing any seeds in there. Where are the seeds? Yeah, okay, that's the seed. I gotcha, I gotcha. Remove the seed. Seeded and diced. I don't know, I'm just gonna do this. My interpretation of dicing is like cutting into cubes, right? And I don't know um, how you do that with kumquats. So I'll just do my interpretation of a dice of a kumquat. Keep in mind that I have looked online and no one could tell me how to dice a kumquat. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. I wonder if I can just like freeze them and next time if I ever need kumquats again, I have them in the freezer. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I don't know. That's the problem for another day. Yeah, we're just going for it. In a small saucepan, I need two tablespoons of dry white vermouth, two tablespoons of cognac, orange liqueur, or kirsch. I'm gonna get a little funky here. I'm gonna do one tablespoon of cognac and one tablespoon of orange liqueur, which is Cointreau. Let's start with that. Woo. In the bowl with the strawberries and the sugar, check that out. Look at that juice. Need a quarter cup worth. Strawberry juice. And then sprinkle on two packets of gelatin. No joke. Let that soften for a couple minutes. Stir over the heat to dissolve the gelatin completely. For how long? Completely. Just on like a medium heat with a whisk. And then I gotta fold this into the strawberries. Along with a quarter cup of diced kumquats, as well as two third cup of sliced almonds. Fold it all together. Chill or stir over ice until thickened. I'll chill it. Chillin'. It is well over that 20 minute wait that I was supposed to do before I took this out of here. Uh, it's been about, I can't even ballpark. So uh, yeah, we're just going to have to cross our fingers, cross our toes, and lift this pan and see how it goes. Unintentional rhyming. Holding paper flat on table, gradually lift off the pan, starting at the loose end. What? I'm just gonna take this off. Carefully dislodge the paper from the long side of the cake. I guess I gotta do the tablecloth trick with this cloth. That was easy. So trim the brown edges all around the cake. Mm. Mm. If that's a preview of what's to come, <laughs> then. Okay, so here's my chilled um, 
like an off spec. What's kind of, yeah. This, spread the jelly over the cake. She doesn't say anything about leaving it like a edge around. To roll this, I'm gonna go lengthwise rather than widthwise because the filling is so thick. I think it only needs a couple rolls. I don't know. I'm using the wax paper to help me roll it. I feel like there might be just a bit too much filling to make this roll up the way I need it to because it's starting to crack here. If I can roll this perfectly, then the cracking is not going to matter. You're not going to see it, but I need to be perfect on this next roll. Uh. No, that's not. That's not happening today, everybody. That is not going to happen. Mmm! I keep eating this cake. It is like a 10 out of 10 in terms of taste. It's like one of the best cakes I've ever tasted. <laughs> However, it has become unrollable. This thing is not gonna work. It is completely cracked right up here. It's cracked everywhere. And I think the filling was just too heavy for this tiny delicate cake, especially because I screwed the pooch on uh, using the cake when I was supposed to as per the recipe and roll it up only 20 minutes after she said so. Thing is, in Julia's show, she makes the filling after she makes the cake. And in this book, that's how it's presented too. So when she says the cake is now ready for the filling, which should be done immediately, kind of makes you wonder why she didn't put the filling first in the cookbook. Or in the show. Also because I took too long to get to the cake, the icing sugar that was on top, kind of just like melted into the cake and made it kind of damp and soggy. How's it going? It was going great. Uh-oh. It fell apart. Oh, no. <laughs> it's some of the best cake I've ever had. Do you want to try a little bite? Okay. It's so... Just a little one. Mm, what's in it? Nuts? Almonds. Mm. Okay, so we all know what has to happen here. I gotta redo the cake. Hi everyone, welcome back to the, the evening show. I'm ready to see what I got underneath the hood here. Although I must say, I made a boo-boo. I will be the first to admit, it's too stupid to even tell you what I did. You can see I have a big mound of cake in my hand. That doesn't feel too good. Besides that, I think everything was great, so. I think we're just gonna try to roll it up as it is now with that huge gaping. So last time I rolled up one of these cakes, I went lengthwise, not widthwise. And since the widthwise didn't really turn out for me, yep, we're going lengthwise. Okay, and I'm gonna use the paper to help. So this cake is crumblier than the last one, but I'm gonna just go full steam ahead and see what happens. Believe in yourself, anything is possible, come on. Come on. That's not what I had in mind. Earlier today, um, I was standing in front of you. Just so much potential I had. I felt like I could do anything. I had a vision of the French jelly roll in my head and I thought, you know, not only do I see that vision, I'm going to exceed those expectations.
12 year old scotch. You only save it for special occasions. This is the hardest part of the show right now is figuring out what my next move is because I'm like a deer in the headlights and I've been here many times before, but it's like 8.30 in the evening. I'm on like take two of this. Something is clearly not working. You know, I'm making a video at the same time. So it's just like, I need something here and I know I can do better than this. And I've seen myself do better than this. And like, what the hell is this? This is worse than the first try. So, um, uh, you know, I have like 80% of a can of kumquats left over. And I think right there is the deciding factor. I got to do it for the kumquats. So we ride tomorrow. So it's a new day, you know, got a haircut, uh, good looking cake in front of me, third time's a charm. So I've heard. Firstly, I was focused on the recipe. Wasn't talking to you guys. I was just reading the book and making sure I was doing every step as, as best as I could. Secondly, I pulverized almonds into as fine a powder as I could make it this time rather than what I was using last time because maybe that was one of the reasons why this cake couldn't roll up. Maybe the almond flour or the pulverized almonds were not fine enough. Take the broom, sweep it. So the filling has been redone as well, much more solidified than the last time. So hopefully that's gonna help with whatever the hell I'm doing right now. If this doesn't work, I don't know what to do. Third time is not a, third time is not a charm. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I, I can't get this. Uh, I think I have enough to make one more. Okay, so yeah, is there such a thing as fourth time being charms? I guess we're gonna find out. This is gonna be the most focused I've ever been making a cake. Just watching Julia make the cake on her show and she had it to the point where it was just spongy. Like, you know, you're pushing it another couple seconds and you know, you're gonna miss the mark. So this was in for eight minutes this time around. Whew. Icing sugar business. And I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit on top. Okay, so that's as far as you're gonna push that. I have this recipe memorized at this point. So now wax paper on top and where's that damp kitchen towel? Still damp, nice. Kitchen towel on top. Flip this, the Julia Child method, which is the smart method. Take a bigger tray and just go, yoop. And then I'm gonna let that hang out for 20 minutes. I wanna do one last thing that's gonna just be a little different than what I've been doing. I honestly feel this filling has something to do with it. It is so heavy, right? It's just all these solid pieces of fruit that are falling on the counter. But I think, what if I, kind of blend some of it up and try to turn some of it into like a jelly of some sort. How would that go? Now this is just purely an experiment. 
I think I've made more of a smoothie. I've made a smoothie. I think my brain is just broken at this point. But if I combine that with, yeah, I made a smoothie. So I think I'm just gonna put this in the fridge and have it firm up. That wasn't too smart. This time around, I'm not gonna add so much of the filling. So yeah, it didn't turn out exactly how I want, but it's... Did you hear that? I don't know what that was. I'm gonna add less filling on this time and just kind of, yeah, much less. This is gonna be my last attempt. I can't just keep doing this forever. Or I'm gonna just, I hate this cake. I, as of right now, I hate it. So it really has to be uh, successful right now or it's done, it's done for me. <laughs> I'm done. I'm gonna throw in this damp kitchen towel and that's it. Come on, come on. I think we have good news. We may have good news here. about and I got a new serving platter that I'm just gonna throw this sucker right on top get rid of the towel come on you freaking piece of wax paper that's stuck underneath this thing I'm trying to do the magic tablecloth trick and it's not working I think I beat you I think I beat you yeah, that's what victory tastes like. That's what victory tastes like. That's it. Order up. So I'm not gonna lie to you. Tastes like the other three that I made, except it looks much nicer. So just exhausted, uh, exhausted from this recipe. Exhausted about talking about it and thinking about it. And I just need a break from it. I feel like I have it off by heart. I do, I have it off by heart. And at least I got my money's worth of the kumquats. That's a positive. It's just, it, you know what it is? It's the Julia Child orange and almond cake curse. The filling, um, I mean, I don't know. Just imagine what a filling like that would taste like with all those ingredients. That's exactly what it tastes like. Yeah, it's, <laughs> sorry, it's very curt, but I've just, I'm done. I'm done with this cake. I hate this cake. Really great, but I hate this cake. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. That was orange cakes.